Do you want to learn how to go from this to this? Boy oh boy, you are in the right place! If you don't know how to go about it, in this video you will learn how to do it. And before I show you any actual brush strokes, let me explain what is wrong, for example, with these two faces that you can see right now on screen. I mean, these miniatures have the paint job so bad, I would consider it art on its own. In order to have nicely painted face, it is always better to have really detailed miniature. In this case, you can see that all of the details and recesses have been kinda filled with thick coat of paint. If you cover the miniature with so much paint, you will absolutely destroy all of the details and you won't be really able to wash slash shade it. And honestly, it's gonna look pretty bad. You can even see that the eyes are all over the place and that this happened because there was no point where you could aim your brush. Another thing to notice here is that the skin is painted with just one paint. And this doesn't really work out on the face since it lacks volume. So to avoid this, you should at the very least build one smooth layer of skin tone then use some sort of wash and paint the eyes after that. Now this is very simplistic and I don't even use this method. Instead I am using layering slash glazing to build up some nice volume. Now I will not talk a whole lot about each individual paint, but know that I have used these two skin tone sets from scale 75. Alright, so with that being said, let's paint! I'm starting off really dark here with this brown, and I am progressively gonna build up the skin with lighter skin tones. It might take you two or three thin coats for nice foundation. After the foundation has been built, I'm taking lighter layer, but definitely not the lightest one yet, and I will layer it down just like this. You wanna make the layer transparent enough so the brown is still visible through the layer. And that is definitely the case for the space under his cheekbones. You can see that I'm first covering the main facial features, such as nose, cheekbones, eyebrows, chin and mouth. Since these parts are gonna end up being the brightest in the end anyway, I wanna see first if I'm going in the right direction and after that I'm layering the rest of the space. With this first layer I have covered around 80% of the face. Of course, this is just a rough estimate, because I leave this coat somewhat transparent on some places. So essentially, I am glazing in more shaded parts and layering on the exposed parts. So I suppose that now is a good time to talk about difference between glazing and layering. Now if you are a little bit confused about these two techniques, don't worry, because there is pretty much just one single difference, and that is that when you are glazing, you are using way more water, or any sort of medium. As such, glazing is much more suitable when you are trying to build that smooth gradient, just like here for example between the dark and lighter colors, because it makes the previous layer way more visible. Glazing is also somewhat necessary when you are painting non-metallic metal, since smoothness is really important there. However, if you are layering with less water, you will be much quicker overall. Now that doesn't mean that you have to choose one or the other, because they really work nicely together. For example, I will use layering to cover his chin and I will use glazing to pretty much cover the area between his cheekbone and the chin to make this area sort of smooth and still so there is shade under his cheekbone. As I progress with this guy's face, it is sort of the same process over and over again, just with different paints. You will see me build smooth coats on top of each other and as I go lighter and lighter, I will cover less and less of his face. And the lightest or the brightest parts will definitely be his nose, cheekbones, eyebrows, lips and chin. I think that many of you have already noticed now that I am not using any sort of wash so far. If I was about to use GW Wash, I would either go for Rayclan Flesh Shade or even more likely for Agrix Earth Shade, also known as literal unicorn tears in a jar that improve every single paint job, but using this method though, I don't need any wash. Since I started really dark, I don't need to darken the recesses. Instead, I am using my layering slash glazing method to slowly but surely build up smooth, bright skin tone. If you are painting bold head just like this one, you also want to put there a nice even layer on top of it. As you approach sides of his head, however, you should layer less and glaze more, as sides should definitely be darker than the top of his bold head. 
Now I'm pretty much finishing the skin with the last layer and this one is definitely the brightest and as such is used just for the chin, cheekbones, nose and the eyebrows. We are also gonna hit his lower eyelids, but that comes a little bit later. Before I move on to paint his eyes, I will glaze this scar on his face with just a little bit of pink paint. To paint the eyes you have to have iron will and balls of steel. And by balls of steel I mean your eyeballs, because they have to stay focused. Uh, yeah, so pretty much I mean that you have to be really patient and just be careful. First, take any kind of black and cover his eye sockets. If you hit his lower eyelid, this is sort of to be expected, but surely do not hit any more than that. As I already mentioned, you need to be really focused and patient here and just try to hit the correct area, which is the eye socket. Now I'm taking close to white paint for better coverage, as pure white does not cover that well. And I am trying to cover even less surface at the center of the eye socket. When you are painting the eyes and any face really, you will really see the importance of picking high quality brushes with a really nice tip. And now finally we are gonna paint the pupil. I always aim for the center down of the eye socket near the bottom eyelid as if it looked like he is looking down, but I guess that is just my preference and what I find works the best. It usually doesn't work out on the first try, so be prepared to go back and forth between the white and black until it looks right. And just when I feel like it looks good, I go back to the lightest skin tone and cover his lower eyelids. For his teeth, I also use off-white paint, because as I said, white by itself usually does not cover that well. And be careful to cover just the teeth and nothing else, or you will have to fix it again. I will also paint the recesses between his lips and teeth with watered down black color. This will stain his teeth a little bit, so another coat may be necessary. The same is true for his lower lip, so I will cover it too. Before I call this face finished, I will use pinkish red paint to glaze over the tongue. Just the tip is enough in this case. Finally, I covered the metallic studs on his forehead and that's the face finished. Okay, we got the male face covered and what I'm gonna show you now is how to paint a face that is more soft. We are gonna use here more light and desaturated paints, so I would perhaps recommend using this method for female and elf faces, but honestly just use it for whatever you like. I am starting with more of a pinkish base layer and even though it looks fairly light so far, do not worry as when it dries it will get darker. Once it's on her face, the paint that is, <laughs> I'm picking lighter paint with more yellow and white in it and start covering mainly the chin, cheeks, nose and forehead. Keep in mind that adding white just desaturates the paint while adding yellow will make it pop more. That is why lighter skin tones add both of these elements. That is also one of the reasons why you need to add yellow when highlighting red or green colors. As you can see I am once again glazing over darker areas and layering on those parts which I know will be bright. So honestly, as you can see the process here is quite similar to the first face, but since here the face is more round with less recesses, you will have to really focus on making the transitions as smooth as possible. Like this I am adding lighter and lighter layers and making them as smooth as possible. I even use more glazing off camera to not bore you to death, so don't be surprised if you see too much difference between the shots. I am now once again painting mouth and the eye socket, so again be careful to not hit anything other than that. Center of the eye sockets and mouth is gonna be painted with off white, leaving a black liner near the edges. I would recommend being rather patient here, so you don't have to come back to your skin tone paints. You can see me stroke the same point over and over again until the paint catches on where I want it to be. And so once that is done, I go back to my black paint and mark the pupils again in the center down area. To finish the face, I pick even lighter skin tone and go over the most elevated features and I even smooth out the gradient by glazing off cam. Here you can see what sort of movement am I doing with my brush. This is how I gather the paint in one spot, like here on this cheek and forehead when the paint is too thin. So the face now is finished and after I painted the eyebrows, here are both heads fully finished. 
Okay, my friends, so this is the video. Hopefully you learned something new and now your faces won't be looking like this. So if you did learn something new and you would like to see more content like this, just don't be shy, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you will know about every single video that I'm gonna release. If you wanna help this channel out, go ahead and like this video so that way the miniature painting gods will bless me and they will shove this video in front of others. So yeah, this is it. If you have any feedback, go ahead and leave it down in the comment section and bye.